a mess on the Golden Gate Bridge this morning. Look at this. How safe are you on the Golden Gate? Another head-on collision raises new safety questions about the world's most famous bridge. This morning's accident points out just how small a margin for error there a is. A driver traveling south on the bridge crossed over the center line and then slammed into an SUV, seriously injuring three women inside, leaving one of them paralyzed. My name is Grace Dammon, and I've come today with a man named Brian Clark. We had an unfortunate meeting on the Golden Gate Bridge. I decided to drive in what we all call the suicide lane. Coming up from the other direction was Brian Clark. He had a medical condition that hadn't been diagnosed yet. He passed out at the wheel. He crossed over and hit my car right at the door. It was an accident that had many causes and conditions. And here we have proof of what it costs when dangers are not dealt with. Dr. Dammit and her daughter were left seriously injured, and others, sadly, have lost their lives. I would always drive in the slow lane crossing this bridge because I didn't feel safe. You always had that thought that somebody coming the other way may kind of step on the wrong pedal. Uh, just being in that far in that lane, the car's coming at you and realizing they have thousands of tons of moving metal coming right at you, separated by two feet, just didn't seem all that safe. I mean, seriously, there's like these cars, you know, going so fast right into you. It always seemed like if something would happen, someone could just swerve into your lane. They one slight move to the left and they could hit me. You know, the collision is deadly. Many conditions can be changed and could have prevented the accident. The median barrier being the one that we're celebrating today. You can't prevent all auto accidents, but you can prevent head-on auto accidents and serious injuries and deaths on the Golden Gate Bridge. Today, we're going to stop saying what if on how to save lives, and we're going to do it. My name's Chris Saunders. I'm a senior vice president with Lindsay Transportation Solutions, and I'm in charge of our global movable barrier business. The bridge went through a very thorough analysis, and I think their conclusion at the end was that this was the most viable, cost-effective solution for them to use. The main thing for commuters is you know, primarily safety, and in the Golden Gate Bridge's case, that's what they were solving was the safety aspect. At a certain point, they determined that they could not use our old 24-inch barrier, so we ended up designing a new, narrower barrier that gave them the, the lane widths that they wanted. This narrow barrier is a steel shell filled with concrete for weight. Typically, for most projects, we make the barrier close to the site that it's going to be used, and then the machines are always made in California and either exported or shipped around the, the U.S. The Golden Gate Bridge District basically decided that we would close the bridge on Friday night, about midnight. We had three crews setting barrier in different directions, and we set the barrier in about 18 hours. The bridge opened ahead of schedule and that allowed a lot of training to occur for the bridge operators so that they were more comfortable and then it opened well ahead of the commute. This is definitely a A plus in terms of safety. So what I really like about this system is that it feels safer, particularly when you're driving at different hours of the day. Uh, if anything, I've heard people say, oh, it's so cool, have you seen it happen, you know, I've seen how it works. And I just think the fact that they move it every day back and forth is just 
awesome. Now it's just as simple as getting in the little truck and uh, called road zipper, you just zip it back to where it needs to be. I think it's a genius idea. You know, having a real barrier there is going to be great for safety. This is a good thing. This is a very good thing. I don't know how popular this thing is yet, but if it's not, I think San Francisco made a great investment. Having a positive barrier with opposing traffic is certainly what most highway engineers would like to do if they can. And this is a solution that allows them to do that efficiently. It's a very cost effective solution. And if I'm a taxpayer, I think I'm interested in the net present value, not the cost of the project. We, we have received letters from family members who believe that their family member was alive because they hit our barrier and didn't cross over. It's a pretty meaningful job to have when you can say that you save somebody's life. This barrier is really about public health and the threat that is caused by traffic coming in either direction. We have an obligation to eliminate it. Fewer tears, fewer heartache, fewer losses, more security, more safety. <laughs>